we urge our audience here at Executive to storytell themselves powerfully in a compelling way to help the potential next boss see the value you could create and the difference you can make at their organization. Is there a way to do that, Harriet, and then Mark, so that you aren't dating yourself? For example, when you talk about things you did in the past or ways you helped people in the old days. I'm being kind of um, extreme in my examples, but can you give us some more realistic ones about how to negotiate that territory when you want to story tell what you can do for someone, but you feel like you need to borrow from the past, but you don't want to sound like you're borrowing too much and too long into the past because it kind of dates you. How do you do that? Well, we, Mark and I are both big proponents of behavioral interviewing and the STAR model. And behavioral interviewing does believe in the premise that recent past predicts recent future, or near future. Recent past predicts near future. So you're right on, Tony, in terms of the more recent kinds of examples. Now, that doesn't say that you can't pull from your past and talk about your pattern of expertise or experience or impact, and then cap that off with something that's a bit more recent. The other is sometimes we forget, um, not being just out of college, that some of the non-professional, non-workplace examples also count. Um, for instance, if I was talking about strategic planning, it's not something that's directly in my role right now at Executive. However, I'm on the board of our local farmers union, our farmers market, and I'm very involved in strategic planning for that organization and looking at legislation and adjustments that needed to be made for COVID and so on and so forth. So I can borrow from my past where I did that in a corporate setting, but I can tap that off with something that's more recent. So I would just say to you that everything matters, not just what you've done with your corporate title. It's what you've done to have an impact, period. And when you can talk about those things, your energy, your enthusiasm, your commitment, your knowledge will also come through. Mm -hmm. Mark, any more thoughts on that one? Yeah, I would add uh, prepare and be strategic. Uh, when we work with, um, the coaches, uh, we have, you know, we line up, here's the core value you bring, very specific. And then our advice is typically align two to three well-crafted stories for each of those values. And I would add, uh, it probably doesn't play well to talk about way back in the day. So be it your career and be, have all these different values you bring and be it the direction is to align two to three stories, surely should come up with some stories that you're prepared, that are of more recent time, and then have those in the repertoire, uh, already framed up and in your mind, ready to pull out and mix and match based in, in the interview, based on the situation. So I think the prep of, you could predict 80% of the questions given the role. And you can get even 90% if you research this company, how they do interviewing, do they do behavioral interview, do they use other type of modeling of, of interviews, you could prepare and then pick stories that might be more current, structure them in a way that they're balanced, you know, with a beginning, middle and end, and then be able to tell them crisply and clearly. That's the best advice to, to really make sure your, your, your stories work for you versus against you. 